Welcome to Everyday Nursing Knowledge Lectures and today we will learn vasospasm after subarachnoid hemorrhage. Vasospasm is the narrowing of the cerebral arteries that leads to decreased blood supply to the brain and it occurs as a complication of the subarachnoid bleed that is bleeding into the subarachnoid space or a ruptured aneurysm that is outpouching of the blood vessels. And vasospasm occurs as a complication after subarachnoid hemorrhage or ruptured aneurysm and usually occurs during day 3 to day 21. And highest risk is approximately at day 7. What causes vasospasm after the bleed? When red blood cells break down, the byproducts cause the blood vessels to contract and that causes the spasm. Now what are the signs and symptoms patient may experience with vasospasm? Patient may have severe headache. Decreased loss of consciousness or altered mental status or confusion, focal or motor deficit. How will you monitor for vasospasm? A patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage, transcranial Doppler is ordered from day 3 to day 14. Transcranial Doppler is the ultrasound to detect cerebral blood flow or blood flow to the brain. It helps to detect or rule out vasospasm. Now, what are the treatment for vasospasm? Patients after subarachnoid hemorrhage are ordered calcium channel blockers. They are vasodilators, nemodipine or nematop from day 1 to day 21. And the dose is 30 mg every 2 hours or 60 mg every 4 hours. It comes as a capsule and the patient can be taken by mouth or in a liquid form through NG tube. When a calcium channel blockers are ordered, monitor for systolic blood pressure. Another treatment is intra-arterial vasodilators. A patient is taken to IR for cerebral angiography. Cerebral angiography is a procedure in which a catheter is inserted into the artery through the groin or through the arm. A contrast material is injected into the arteries and x-rays are taken to detect the blood flow to the brain. And in intra-arterial vasodilators, the vasodilators, example of verapamil or nicardipine, are injected directly into the arteries, which helps to relieve or treat the spasm. So today we learned about vasospasm after subarachnoid hemorrhage and thanks for watching my video.